welcome to Casa de Milagro and the Dulce America video podcast. My name is Bing, and today we're going to be focusing on that friend of the dulcimer player, the pick. Now, back in the old days, they didn't use picks. They actually used bird feathers, also known as quills, that they would strum across the strings with. Of course, you can also finger pick. Or you can just kind of lightly strum across these strings with your finger. You can even put picks on the end of your fingers, like banjo players, and play like that. But today we're going to focus on the use of the pick, and uh, the many different types of picks that there are, and the types of picks that I use to get the sound I've been developing over the last few years. The pick I'm holding right now is one of the most common picks you're going to find on the market. It's basically a plastic pick, and this one in particular is made by Fender, the instrument company. And this is called a 351 pick. I don't know why, but there it is. It's got a wider body, so it's easier to hold, and it's got a rounded tip. And that makes a big difference when you're getting in there and trying to play your notes. A very popular pick among dulcimer players is one imported from Germany, and it's called a Hurdum pick. And I'm sure you've seen these. They look like uh, arrowheads. They've got three corners, and each corner, as you can see, has a little Roman numeral there. And that's a different thickness for each one so that you can rotate the pick and you can get different sounds. Three picks in one. These are real neat. The little serrated edge there, rumor has it, is used by some players to get a sharper sound, including the edge from the band U2. I haven't played around with that yet, but maybe perhaps someday. I just found that out. Then there are picks made of tortoise shell, and a lot of these are very hard to find because there has been an embargo on using tortoise, actual tortoise shell for these picks. I'm sure the tortoises are very happy about this fact, but there are imitation tortoise shell picks. You can still find actual tortoise shell picks in China if you import them. And there's an example of kind of what a tortoise shell pick looks like. And this is a special commemorative pick that was, isn't that nice? That was given to, to me by a very, very awesome dulcimer player named Josh No. Hello, Josh. Thank you for the pick. The problem I find with the imitation tortoise shell picks is that they are made of plastic. And plastic, if you're an aggressive player, tends to break or rip. And if you play with a ripped pick and don't realize it and catch the edge of the string, you can either break the string or you can just shatter the pick. Which, you know, no big loss with the pick, but strings are kind of expensive, so you kind of want to watch that. Now, this is a pick that I personally like to use. The manufacturer is Jim Dunlop, and these are nylon picks. And as you can see, they are... Uh, pretty indestructible. You can bend them in half. So the same pick can last you for weeks and months, even years, if, you, if you're careful with it and don't lose it in the wash, like sometimes I do. And uh, these Dunlop hooks here are called um, nylon standards. They're available at jimdunlop.com or in many stores. You can order them and you can see they go from very very light which is like a 0.38 millimeter to a heavy heavy uh, gray 0.73 millimeter there on the end and it all it goes all the way up to 1.0 millimeter and that's a black pick of course heavy picks will give you a harder sound and softer picks will enable you to play through the strings although super light like this super grimy <laughs> pick I've got here I have no idea where that pick has been when it plays through the strings like this, you'll get a big flapping sound. That's extremely wimpy, and I wouldn't really suggest using that unless you're trying to play very quietly. 0.46 is pretty good for getting some play through. But when you go to cross pick and play on different strings, it can be uh, not as effective as having a harder pick. So I used to use those, but I kind of graduated up to the pick that I use most often, and that is the 0 0.60 millimeter. Because uh, depending on how hard you hold the pick, you can get a, a variety of different sounds off of it. You can get kind of a nice light playthrough holding the pick very lightly. Or you can kind of tighten your grip on the pick 
and that causes the pick to get a little stronger. So you can go. And I'm not strumming any harder with that. That's just simply by tightening my grip on the pick. So you can get a variety of different noises. And then if you want to, you can even turn the pick around upside down like that and play with the back end. Not quite as cool as having three corners like a herd and pick, but nonetheless, it is very, very cool to have. A lot of people like to use the heavier picks because it gives them more control over playing individual notes. And as a dulcimer player, you probably want that if you're playing a lot of melody. But if you're playing rhythm and accompaniment, it's good to have a playthrough feel because then you can actually use a dulcimer not only as a rhythm instrument and a melodic instrument, but also as a percussion instrument. And I'll show you what I mean by that. Here's a song that uh, Mojave recorded called Come On With Me. And to start off the song, even before I really start playing any notes, I dampen the strings just a little bit and I play a rhythm, the hand bone rhythm. It goes like this. pick is somewhere in the middle of the uh, thickness spectrum, it bends enough to where I can get a nice playthrough on the strings, even when I'm holding down the strings. The, pen, the pick actually bends back. And I can take that pick and I can push it down really hard, and you can kind of see the, uh, the end of it flapping back and forth like that, which gives me an additional sort of percussive control. But the 0.60 millimeter pick is also really good for doing cross picking. So like I said, it really is the all-purpose pick that I've been using for quite some time and it's a lot of fun. The other kind of thing, uh, the other thing that's kind of cool about this one is it's got a little if you can see on there at the top where it says USA Nylon, it's got a little grip there. So if you get sweaty fingers like I sometimes am prone to get, uh, it serves as like non-slip, like what you put on a stair to keep you from breaking your butt if you walk on a, on a wet staircase. So it's easier to grip and a lot of fun. The final thing that I'll talk about here, for all of you budding rock stars out there, it's a proper way to throw your pick. Launching a pick is some serious business, and I learned my craft by watching the great Rick Nielsen son of Cheap Trick, who throws like 80,000 picks during a show. So, the key here is not to simply throw the pick like you'd throw any other object. As you can see, it doesn't go very far being made of plastic, or nylon in that case. Now, what you want to do is you want to get that pick in between your thumb and forefinger, and then flick it with the appropriate motion forward, which not only gives you your distance, but it gives you accuracy. So my friends, that does it for a little discussion about our friend the pick. Tune in next time. Until then, this is Bing Fat San. Mahalo, Nui Loa. <laughs>